Today, a picture is worth so much more than a thousand words. A single image can unleash an unlimited number of retweets and likes and views that surround us and propel our reality. Together, all these digital bits, they come together to form the collective memory of our civilization. And some of those memories are inspiring and effortless to preserve. But some, they ache. There are difficult memories that some would rather forget or ignore or even deny. As everything becomes digital, what are we doing to preserve the integrity of these vulnerable memories? Memories that could be lost to time and also overwhelmed with hate. We've only had moving images 140 years, and we don't know what it's gonna take to have moving images last through time. Digitization is not preservation. The hard drives in the cloud are lasting barely five years. And what we're finding is that the newer the technology, the faster it rots. When you put this content out into the digital world, it is completely vulnerable. It also enables those who want to deny it the chance to manipulate it, to change it, to alter it, to retell that story. And as a result, we have a lot of noise and misinformation and the potential to sow confusion, hatred, and even conflict. If you can't trust the images, the video, the audio that you're seeing, how do we agree on the facts? And if we can't agree on the facts, then we can't make decisions. That's the challenge that motivated us to create the Starlink Framework for Data Integrity. It's a joint program between the USC Shoah Foundation and Stanford's Department of Electrical Engineering. We've convened engineers, lawyers, journalists, and experts from around the world in over 25 cities. Together, we're building tools and principles that restore trust in our digital media. Starling transforms the preservation of our most historically sensitive documents by putting them on the decentralized web. All you need to do to participate is have one of these, a mobile phone. The USC Shoah Foundation is an archive of 55,000 testimonies of witnesses to genocide from around the world over the last century. The mission of the Shoah Foundation is to develop empathy, understanding and respect through testimony. So in fact, the mission is really about not the testimony itself as valuable and as precious as that is, but what it means in the world, what we do with the testimonies that we have to challenge and change our world. They do this to ensure that the very detailed accounts of what these survivors went through are never forgotten. And with the COVID-19 pandemic, the aging survivors of genocide are feeling increased urgency to tell their story. We have over nine genocides in the archive, reaching back to the beginning of the 20th century, right up until you know the current day. So how do we ensure that as we hand on this archive to the next generation, that we can be absolutely certain that it will be pristine? Today what we do is we have large data centers that we keep both at the Shoah Foundation and other locations around the world to preserve the interviews. But we wanted to look at what was coming next and be a part of pushing the technology forward. So we asked ourselves, what if we took the Shoah Foundation's key archive and created another backup to it? One that was decentralized, allowing millions of people to store pieces of it just on their mobile phones. How could everyone ensure that these records were not lost to time? And as the data was decentralized, we wanted to maintain its integrity. And that's where blockchain-based technology comes in. It's able to provide advanced cryptography and mathematical proofs that show that although data has been stored in as many locations as possible, it hasn't been modified or tampered with in any way. What the new blockchains let us do is effectively write to a public ledger that anybody can write to, and anything you write to that ledger stays on that ledger and never goes away. And that by itself has many capabilities and applications that we're only beginning to see the use for. Starling is an end-to-end -end framework that establishes trust as you capture, store, and verify imagery. We start right on the camera. Working with HTC and this incredible team in Taiwan called Numbers, we developed a special set of applications and firmware that use hardware-based encryption to take directly off the sensor of the camera signatures and hashes that create a seal around the image 
and ensure that that seal cannot be broken. Under the hood, we were proud to be contributing code to an open source library called Proof Mode, developed by the NGOs Witness and the Guardian Project. It allows us to not only secure the image, but also stamp it with metadata from the phone's sensors to prove the exact time and place the image was taken. Then, using cutting edge protocols from Filecoin and IPFS, we give each photo a unique ID, make multiple copies of it, and then store those copies securely on the decentralized web. To do this, we work with small data industries and Postlight Studios to create a suite of tools that orchestrate the storage across an array of devices, from mobile phones to powerful servers in the cloud, the internet archive, and even mesh networks run by the Haifa Cooperative. All of them came together to preserve history in a new and secure way. So now you could capture and store media, but you still need to verify it. We have to make these documentation efforts worth it and the risks that people have taken to capture this information worth it. And that requires new forms of documentation so that we can prove accountability down the line. In collaboration with Hollis Systems, we leveraged Hyperledger Fabric and the Hedera Hashgraph to create a verification system that brings humans back into the loop. The module allows experts such as aid workers, journalists, and even war crimes prosecutors to forensically examine images and clarify their contents with annotations. Each organization records their assertions on their own tamper-proof ledger. And with a gun database, end users can quickly retrieve the analysis on the web or on social media. What's so powerful about these solutions is that the more people that contribute their compute and storage to this effort, technically, the file seal becomes stronger and stronger, and the files become harder to destroy. Think of it as a people-powered protection of history. And this, for us, is the new frontier of what activism looks like. We decided very early on that the Starling framework was going to be built on case studies because we wanted to basically lead by example. Today is the 27th of February. I'm here to uh, record a testimony for the USC Shoah Foundation. We started with the Shoah Foundation's canonical case study, the Holocaust. Working with the Foundation's engineers and researchers, we cryptographically recorded testimony and then piloted a way to bring that testimony into the archive. We also equipped the Shoah Foundation's team to go to Iraq and document the plight of Kurdish refugees who are fleeing a dangerous, pre-genocidal situation. This was an incredible juxtaposition of two very different case studies. And although their stories were separated by 80 years, they showed the lasting power of testimony. So we went as far as Iraq and Syria to document new genocides, but then deep into the Amazon to document one of the oldest. Pablo Alvarenga is an award-winning photojournalist who covers the defenders of the rainforest. We deployed our prototypes with him so he could give voice to the struggles of indigenous people that are being persecuted for their profound beliefs in the environment. Human rights activists are worried that climate change will be one of the biggest precipitators of violence and genocide in the future. By using decentralized technologies, we were able to support indigenous people in all the remote technical environments that they inhabit because we wanted to ensure that the world's most important allies on the front lines of global warming cannot be silenced. We also realized that those very same tools could be powerful for journalists. Reuters, for its entire history, has been dedicated to the objective capture of information to be able to then disseminate into newspapers and media organizations around the world. And so we began a relationship with Reuters to explore how our technology could be helpful to the work that their photographers bravely do every day in creating photos for the Reuters Newswire. Now, a newspaper, when they embed images in the articles that they publish, those images could have digital signatures embedded in them. It allows me as a reader to verify that the images I'm seeing have not been fabricated, have not been edited, and have not been enhanced in some way. In a time of manipulated speech and fake news and deep fakes, what we wanted to do with this project was say, we know for certain that this testimony was given at this place and in this time by this person, and this is their testament. What this changes is that now video becomes an historical document because you can verify precisely where and when and how and whom 
that document relates to. This actually changes the game for how we document history, period. As we speak, the internet's evolving. We want to do our part to make sure that the innovations that are being developed are moving towards a good cause. You just cannot separate the, the science and technology from the ethics. We're starting to ask in whatever we do, not only how to do it, but also why. In every line of computer code that an engineer develops, they are sending a set of instructions to the processor. But at the same time, they're also coding ethics and morals and even civics into the very software that they're developing. I think that's why it's an exciting area to work in, because we're just at the beginning of starting to understand everything the technology is going to be able to provide. Starling is not purporting to have the perfect solution. What we're trying to do is bring the right people to the table to help. The internet, as pervasive as it is, it's still quite vulnerable. It's up to all of us to maintain this vast system of human knowledge. And together, we can all ensure that the lessons from our generations will persist in years to come.